Hello and welcome to a new video about programming Arduinos. This time we are talking about a topic how we could achieve that our program is reacting very fast on some things. Okay? So uh, we have seen our program in our Arduinos they mainly consists of a setup routine uh, and a loop routine. We have said the setup routine is executed once, right? And the loop routine is execu executed in loop. So this is at power up or after reset. Then we jump to here and the loop is executed over and over again. So the reaction time, yeah, at some point, it, one command inside the loop is executed after the next command, uh, after the previous command, of course, <laughs> after the previous command. So line by line, it is executed. You can think about it that it's done that way. Yeah. So it, oh, each execution of a, bro, of a command takes some time. Yeah. So the time evolves by executing the command. All right. Let's say something externally is happening uh, and we want to react on this. So the reaction time now depends how long the program is taking. So maybe it's immediately because we just we are just before reading a digital input. Uh, we're just there yeah, at the correct point in time. Then it happens immediately. And if we are really unlucky, then our, our program has just read in the last state of the input, then in the external world something is happening because the external world does not really care about our where we are in the program right it can happen anytime and then it would take a whole program cycle to read it in again so the reaction time then is pretty long right? and some things this is simply not permitted especially if we have your loop times then if it comes to half a second or something like this, or think about we have somewhere a delay or, you know, then we are reacting not very accurate and not very fast on a certain input. Okay. This is where a concept of interrupt, interrupt comes into into play, let's say. Yeah? So what is an interrupt? An interrupt is a piece of code. Yeah? I can code anything inside there. Yeah? It is called an interrupt service routine or ISR. Okay, so here is an ISR. It's basically, oops, it's basically a function. That's me, I'm the ISR. You can code anything inside this ISR what you like. The return value of this ISR is void. Yeah? So there is no return. ISR. ISR means interrupt service routine. Okay? I S R. Okay, so this ISR, we can code in there something, yeah? but we're not calling this ISR. Yeah? This interrupt service routine is not code somewhere in the code. We can, but usually we don't. Okay, this ISR is triggered by something. Okay, so there is also a trigger event. And this trigger event can occur anytime, anytime, interrupt anytime. Okay, and whenever this trigger event occurs, yeah, we interrupt, this is what his name is, the current program cycle. So let's say the trigger event happens here, somewhere here. Does not really matter where, can be any anytime. In, at any code line, and if we are triggering at this event, we immediately call, we interrupt program execution
call internet service interrupt service routine okay interrupt this is done yeah so whenever this trigger event appears we immediately call this isr wherever we are in our code does not really matter if we're in loop, if we're in setup, if we're in some user programmed uh, function or something like this. The program execution is interrupted and the ISR is executed. Okay? That's an interrupt. So if we are reacting in this ISR pretty fast, yeah, immediately after something has changed. And this is now. Here's our Arduino, okay? In our Arduino Uno, we have two interrupts available. Yeah? So we have, we have an interrupt number. We have an interrupt number zero and we have an interrupt number one. Yeah? And of course, it is not that easy that Interrupt number zero is for pin number zero and interrupt number one is for pin number one. No, this is not the case. Eh? The according pin numbers, there are pin numbers. Yeah. The zero is on pin number two. Yeah. The one is on pin number three. Okay, so it's two and three. Okay. This is for the Uno. Yeah? This is for Uno. On the Mega, it looks a little bit different. On the Duo, it looks different. <laughs> Depending on the on the on the type of, of of Arduino you're using. Okay, and how? We're coding this interrupt service routine. How do we say which interrupt we want to execute? Well, there is a command. It is called attach interrupt. Attach and interrupt. Okay. This is the command. And we have to give the interrupt number. This now says, if I give you zero, I will look at pin number two. All right. Then we have to give the internet, the interrupt service routine, ISR, the name of the function here. Okay. And then we have to give a so-called mode. All right. What's this mode? This mode can either be low, just write in low, yeah? then this interrupt is executed whenever the pin is low. Yeah? It can be a uh, change. Then the interrupt is executed whenever a uh, there is a change, so from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0, from 0 to 5 volts or from 5 volts to 0. Yeah? And if we only want to trigger it by a rising edge, we can write rising. Yeah? Or if we want to trigger it with a falling edge, we write falling. All right, so these are the possible modes. Good. If we're coding a program, yeah, it's compiling on the Uno well. Yeah. Then we want to compile it for a mega, yeah, just the same program. And then this interrupt number here is false. Yeah. It's wrong. This is why we usually do not write here the interrupt number. There is a, a tool for this. Yeah. So we are saying the interrupt number. Interrupt. 
equals. Uh, and we can call we can call the function digital pin to interrupt. And here inside we have the pin number. All right. This function here gives us the correct interrupt number for this pin. So here, if I want to listen to pin number 2, I write here 2, call digital pin to interrupt of 2, I will get out 0, and this 0 I can use here. All right? And if I'm compiling this at a different, for a different board, uh, for a different Arduino board, then the interrupt number is automatically changed by this digital pin to interrupt, because the compiler knows for which board we are compiling, right? Yeah. So these are interrupts. The interrupt will be executed right after trigger event. Okay. If the internet interrupt service routine is finished, we will return to the next command. Okay. And the normal program execution will, will be done. Okay. This is also why an internet interrupt service routine should be rather short. Okay. You don't want to code a lot of code inside there. Just react on the input somehow. That's it. Always short. Always short. Huh? As short as possible. That's a rule. Well, also write it here, yeah, as short as possible. Interrupt. Now you know what an interrupt is. Yeah. In last video, we have seen that this rotor encoder had some issues. In next video, we will try to run this rotary encoder with the help of an interrupt. Okay. This will then be in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.